Welcome, Adam's Flock, to this week's short sermon, where I, under the command of Adam himself, have set out to rank all the different VATS systems of the Fallout series. Now, for clarity's sake, I'm going to refer to the different VATS systems as follows. The system implemented in Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout Tactics are all nearly identical, and I will refer to them as Aimed Shot, since that is how it's referred to in-game. VATS as shown in Fallout 3, I will call VATS 1.0, because that is the first instance of VATS as we know it. New Vegas has almost the same system with some tweaks, so I will refer to it as VATS 1.1. Fallout 4 has a pretty heavily reworked system, so it will be VATS 2.0, and Fallout 76 has another hugely changed system, and I will call it VATS 3.0. So let's get to it and start with dead last place in this ranking list and work towards my number one VATS pick. So, dead last, Fallout 76. Surprised? Probably not, but I'm a fair guy and I didn't set out to designate Fallout 76's version or VATS 3.0 as I'm calling it as my least favorite. This is purely merit based. So let's see if you agree with why I chose this. Now, I'm about to blow a lot of your guys' mind right now, so I hope you're sitting down when I say this. Fallout 76 is an online multiplayer game. I know, shocking. And due to this fact, VATS had to have a total rework from how it worked in every single game up to this point. Aimed Shot and VATS always slowed combat, or in the case of Fallout and Fallout 2, it operated exactly like the turn-based combat system that was already in place, but with an added benefit. VATS 3.0 cannot slow or stop time, disallowing any sort of planning or strategic placement of attacks. It is just as frantic as normal combat, except now you have to toggle through enemies and then scroll through the body parts that you want to target. The hit chance updates in real time, and any object that comes between you and the target will drop the hit chance, and if you happen to shoot at that time, then that is a wasted shot. Something as small as a handrail is enough to drop the hit rate to 0%, and if the target stays at 0% for too long, VATS will automatically quit, even if you can still see parts of the enemy. Since the likelihood of hitting a specific target and body part is based on the visibility of that part to the player, targeting anything other than the torso and head can be quite problematic, since as the target turns their body, some body parts will become less visible and harder to hit. This is totally understandable, but the speed with which some enemies move and how quickly combat occurs makes this more frustrating than anything else. Waiting for a better shot while in VATS can also be an issue, because your AP will slowly deplete as long as VATS is active so you may find yourself without enough AP to finish off the target, while waiting for your hit chance to increase to a reasonable level. So if we aren't able to plan our shots, like we always have been able to do in other VAT systems, that makes this more like an auto-aim system. The tactical aspect of VATs always gave us a different and interesting option within combat. Now we just have the choice between non-auto-aim combat and auto-aim combat. VATS 3.0 deviates from VATS and all other Bethesda titles in more ways by not allowing the player to queue up several attacks on target. Previously, you could choose to shoot one body part on one target several times, or shoot several body parts of a single target, or even shoot several targets all in one VATS session. This is no longer possible in VATS 3.0. Once VATS mode is entered, you can only fire on one target at a time. Again, this makes sense given the real-time aspect, but once the target is down, VATS will disengage. If you wanted to take on a whole group of enemies, you will be in and out of VATS several times as you use it against each target in the group. Contrast this with the methodical approach of tactically choosing what enemies to target until you exhaust all your AP. This is an example of how VATS 3.0 is simply not used how all other versions have been. 
which was to give a chance to allow players to make combat decisions in a strategic manner, finding the best attack plan based on the threat of the enemy, their weaknesses, and the kind of weapon you are using. All of that goes out the window, because again, we can't freeze time, so all these decisions need to be made as it is happening, and there really just isn't a feasible alternative. This point might be slightly controversial amongst some people, but I will tell you why I consider this overall to be a negative aspect of VATS 3.0. Although this trend started in Fallout 4, VATS 3.0 takes this a step farther in the wrong direction. Critical hits are an absolute mainstay in the Fallout franchise and have always been incorporated with aimed shots and VATS. You see, targeting the enemy and the body part that you want is great and all, but the real magic comes with an increased chance of achieving a critical hit when compared to a non-VATS attack. That increased chance can really make the difference and is worth the AP or extra AP expenditure to do so. VATS 3.0 is no different in this regard, except while critical hits have always been an important part of VATS and aim shots, it was still a separate system. You had VATS and you had criticals. Sure, they overlapped quite a bit, and criticals greatly benefited from VATS, but you could still get criticals outside of VATS or aim shot. VATS 3.0 firmly merges the two systems together, making criticals only possible within VATS itself. No more random crits to save your skin in normal combat. If you want to use them, then you need to use VATS, and to me, that is a step backwards. God Howard himself has said that player choice is the number one consideration when building games like Fallout and The Elder Scrolls. So how about we the players get to determine how we want our criticals? VATS 3.0 borrows from 2.0 in Fallout 4 in that criticals are on demand. Once a critical bar is filled, the player can choose to unleash the beast in any VATS shot, and it will be a guaranteed hit. And you know what? That's actually pretty cool. Having some control over the timing can actually save your skin when you really need to put out extra damage to deal with that particularly difficult enemy. However, making that the only way you can have criticals is just backwards. What if instead we get the option to choose perks that let us decide how we want our criticals? VATS loving players can take the path of having criticals only in VATS with the added benefit that these criticals are used at the player's discretion. Those that don't like VATS but still want to benefit from this series staple can instead opt for a perk that does random rolls on each attack and applies a critical when the player gets lucky. There, everyone wins and people don't feel like an integral mechanic is being hid behind another mechanic that they may not enjoy using. My personal belief is that VATS 3.0 is pretty incredibly underwhelming, and by gating criticals behind VATS, that might persuade some players to make VATS part of their build. But isolating something like criticals solely to VATS is just a no-go for me. One of the nails in the coffin for me in regards to VATS 3.0 is that it has the lowest number of perks associated with it from any Bethesda game. Now, Aimed Shot did not have any perks that were specific to that mechanic, and that is something that will affect my decision when we get to it. But it feels like a regression in what had been an overall upward trajectory from Fallout 3. Fewer perks usually means that some builds benefit from VATS and others don't. So now whether you want to incorporate VATS will determine what kind of weapons you want to use, and that is a shame. VATS should augment any build and be an option for anyone that doesn't like the first or third person fighting style or just want to watch their character blow enemies into giblets in slow motion. Now, because I consider myself a pretty fair person, it is worth pointing out any good things VATS 3.0 brings to the table. Some may disagree and think that this is a bad thing, but VATS 3.0 de-incentivizes VAT scanning. What is VAT scanning? You probably already do it and you didn't even realize it. It is when you are just out in the wasteland, exploring, and regularly tapping the VATS button, hoping that you will catch an enemy or a mine that isn't on radar or in plain view yet. Why do I think it is a good idea to de-incentivize this? 
Well, primarily because it's a crutch. And this is coming from someone that VAT scans in all Bethesda titles constantly. Doing so in VATS 3.0 will cause you to consume AP. So should an enemy pop up, well, you have that much less AP to attack with. It isn't an absolute deal breaker, and they didn't just disable the ability, but you have to deal with the consequences, when before, it was basically consequence free. VATS 3.0 will also not target non-hostile essential or neutral characters. This can be vendors or NPCs that are, for one reason or another, not considered an enemy, which also reduces the usefulness of VATS scanning. One pro I will mention is that since VATS is real time, you the player can move while using VATS, just like your enemies can. You can't move the camera, but you can move the player. So if enemies are rushing towards you or you're wanting to get closer to increase a hit chance, that is your prerogative. You aren't stuck where you first initiated VATS. The last good element is, again, rather small, but I call them as I see them. Melee and unarmed fighting in aimed shot and VATS has always been interesting. In aimed shot, you had to be right up close and next to the target to engage. And yeah, that makes sense. It, however, makes using melee or unarmed builds difficult with aimed shot. All the Bethesda games have given the player some breathing room. You are able to engage an enemy from several feet away, and your character would conveniently just teleport next to the target and start hacking away. It is convenient, but a little jarring to see your character bridge the space-time continuum and literally just appear next to the enemy. VATS 3.0 lets you engage the enemy from several feet away, like all the other versions, but when you attack, the character quickly lunges, closing the gap. It looks much more natural than teleporting, and it doesn't really take you out of it. Although depending on your internet connection, it can still look like you're teleporting rather than lunging, so your mileage may vary. In fact, it's a lot better than firing a weapon in VATS 3.0 because your weapon can be aimed well off target and your bullet will still somehow hit the enemy. Suffice it to say, VATS 3.0 takes dead last here, and I think I've laid out some pretty good reasons why I think so. You don't have to take my word for it though, since there is a small number of Fallout 76 players who build their characters with VATS in mind. If not even very many players want to use the system, I think that in and of itself says enough. Let me know if you agree or disagree, or think I've missed something here. Now fourth place surprised me actually, because Fallout 3 is tied for first place in my overall Fallout rankings. But looking at the merits of the VATS systems, this is where it ends up. Fallout 3 VATS, or VATS 1.0 as I'm calling it, is 1.0 because the game introduced VATS as we have come to know it. Previously in Fallout, Fallout 2 and Tactics, it was aimed or targeted shot, but Bethesda decided to incorporate this mechanic in an evolved form in their take on the Fallout franchise. And boy, am I glad that they did. They were so proud of their implementation too, that they made a big deal about it, even making a short promotional video where they talk about it and gave it a real lore-based existence. The Vault Tech Assisted Targeting System makes it clear that VATS is a technology that is assisting the player and the game seems to imply that it comes from the Pip-Boy itself, since VATS cannot be used until after the Lone Wanderer gets their own Pip-Boy in the game's tutorial. In any event, VATS was meant to assuage the fears of those who did not enjoy first or third person games by allowing players to target in almost the same way the aimed shot system allowed in the first games. And that is actually really cool consideration on their part. So why is it in second to last place for me? Well, it speaks more to how good these systems have been implemented more than it speaks poorly of VATS 1.0, but let's get into it. The single biggest issue I have with VATS 1.0 is not that it sucks. To the contrary, 1.0 was built to be too powerful and with the use of a few perks can be just downright game breaking. Perhaps nervous that players that didn't enjoy first-person action RPGs would write off Fallout 3 for its change from the traditional isometric point of view 
VATS 1.0 was extremely robust to the point of being broken. When VATS 1.0 is engaged, the world freezes as the player picks out who they want to attack and what body part, stacking up and queuing attacks in a slow-mo bullet time-like sequence. During this slowed sequence, the player character is standing there and can be attacked by enemies while dishing out their VATS-fueled violence. Since the player cannot move or otherwise mitigate this damage, Bethesda made it so that 90% of damage during this bullet time phase will not affect the player. Again, the player essentially gets a 90% damage resistance buff, heavily negating almost any attack except for the most devastating, like a mini nuke or a merv. This can help players clutch a kill if they are on the verge of death, but it is so easy to exploit in that regard because VATS essentially becomes a shield. Are you on your last bullet and need to reload but you're about to die? Queue up two VATS shots and your character can reload while in VATS with a 90% damage resistance buff. However, this isn't the only thing because Bethesda did something rather amazing, and I mean that. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm never sarcastic. See what I did there? Bethesda implemented perks that only affect VATS, and that is a great addition, and something where aimed shot fell short, since it helps those that want to really use VATS augment their combat to do so, while those that don't can specialize in other ways. However, there is one perk in particular that is just so ridiculously overpowered that it's kind of amazing it made it into the final game. Grim Reaper's Sprint truly lives up to the name, and this is how. If you score a kill while in VATS, the perk will completely refill your AP meter, like you had never even fired a shot in VATS in the first place. This can result in a chain of absolute destruction, since as long as you pick your targets carefully, you can VATS your way through an entire group of enemies, aiming for the head, getting those sweet criticals, getting your kill, and refilling the AP meter just for you to engage VATS once again and do the whole thing all over again. Particularly in the mid to late game, this perk can make combat trivial sometimes. And this, combined with the massive damage resistance buff while in VATS, well, I hope you can see why it is so broken. Now many of you won't have a problem with this, and I kind of understand that. Having some overpowered builds or mechanics can make a game fun if you are just wanting to play through like some god of death and destruction. However, these OP mechanics or builds can make the game mundane, and you might start a game promising to do something different just to fall back on the exploit because it is just so powerful. I consider VATS with Grim Reaper Sprint to be one such exploit that is just too easy to do time and time again and that's why I'm actually counting it against this version of VATS. Although VATS 1.0 did a good job of carrying on the spirit of aimed shot, there's one place where it fell depressingly short, and that is with melee and unarmed attacks. Originally, in the early games, you were able to choose any body part to slice, hack, smack, kick, or punch, and they all had different effects. While VATS 1.0, also allows for different effects based on whether you cripple a certain body part, melee and unarmed damage attacks do not get that privilege. You can only attack the entire enemy. There is no way to choose to punch someone in the face or kick a gun out of someone's hand. While I do understand having the player model specifically target a certain body part would be painstaking and require different animations, it doesn't make it any less of a letdown you can understand why they decided to do something and still be disappointed. A small part of me dies inside every time I realize I can't dick punch a raider into Adam's embrace. Another negative component of VATS 1.0 is that when you queue up attacks on a target, you will get an indication of how much damage that attack will do on the enemy. That's pretty great though, right? Well, yeah, it would be if it actually worked. See, the game calculates how much damage you will do based on if your skill with whatever weapon class you are currently using, say small guns for example, was at 100. That means if your actual skill is below 100, then you are most likely going to do less damage than what is indicated, which can be a big problem. 
This is slightly offset though by the fact that VATS 1.0 increases your critical hit chance by 15%, and that damage estimate does not take criticals into account, because it doesn't know yet whether you will roll a critical or not. So this cuts both ways. It likely overestimates the single shot damage you will do on target, but also doesn't account for potential criticals, which will do much more damage than a conventional shot. But like, is it too much to ask for some simple math that estimates the damage based on my current skill level? Am I being unreasonable here? There are several great things about VATS 1.0. Everything from how it pauses the game to show you an enemy, and the probability of hitting any certain part at that precise moment in time, based on distance, skill, and how much of that body part you can see. You can cycle through targets, see the effect of certain body parts being crippled, and distribute damage across several targets. One new aspect that aimed shot did not have is the ability to target the enemy's weapon, allowing you to disarm your enemy if only for several seconds, giving you some time to deal damage while they cannot retaliate. The theatrical bullet time is not loved by everyone, but definitely brings a dynamic element to the whole experience that can be extremely satisfying to watch in slow motion, and I consider that a plus. VATS 1.0 also introduced the ability to target grenades, and a successful strike on these will result in premature detonation. It isn't super common, but it is oh so satisfying to hit a freshly thrown grenade that was thrown by the enemy while it's still close enough to do damage to them. However, 1.0 is not useful for finding landmines and other kinds of traps. And this might seem like a silly thing to consider a plus, but the mysterious stranger is now a VATS only perk. In the early games, he could show up whenever the player entered a combat map, and he'd just chill there after the fight until the player left the combat map. Trying to talk to him wouldn't yield much, but the dude would just hang out until you grew tired or decided you wanted to kill him because Fallout really does bring out the worst in you, doesn't it? Well, in VATS 1.0, he becomes so much more mysterious, since he is never approachable. He shows up in the bullet time sequence for VATS, if you can't finish off a target, blows away the enemy with his revolver, and is gone as soon as the VATS sequence is over. Only seeing him in this sequence, and never being able to approach him, makes him truly mysterious, and I think it is a step up from the implementation in earlier fallouts. Third place is so because while it is almost exactly the same as VATS 1.0, VATS 1.1, aka the VATS system found in Fallout New Vegas, takes some of the critiques of VATS 1.0 and fixes them, while carrying over almost all the good things about the system. VATS 1.1 is more of a rebalancing, and that is why the naming convention is so. I'm actually going to start with the good rebalancing and added elements that make it a bit better than VATS 1.0 in my completely objective and unquestionable opinion. While VATS 1.0 could make the player very powerful with the damage resistance buff and Grim Reaper sprint exploit, 1.1 dials that back big time. Rather than a 90% reduction in damage taken, now you have a 25% damage resistance buff. So it's still helpful, but it's not nearly as powerful. And if you aren't aware of this, you will find yourself dying a lot more in New Vegas. Grim Reaper's Sprint is also reduced heavily, and rather than completely refilling the AP meter on a VATS kill, it now refills only 20 AP on a kill, which in most cases won't be enough to completely replenish the AP meter. So while it still provides some benefit, you will exhaust your AP as you try to VATS your way through a group, whereas with VATS 1.0, you could just be a time-freezing wizard of complete destruction. Some people will hate these changes, but I welcome it because there's no temptation to fall back into the same old song and dance now. VATS 1.1 also adds more VATS-specific perks that augment more builds, like Plasma Spaz that benefits Plasma builds exclusively. And it's great to see all sorts of builds benefited within VATS, because it really is a system of the people, by the people, and for the people. Or something. I don't know. Help me out, Todd. All of this just works. Thank you. 
Additionally, where VATS 1.0 had Paralyzing Palm, which was an unarmed specific perk, where the player had a 30% chance of paralyzing an enemy on an unarmed VATS strike, New Vegas implemented special melee and unarmed moves that are only usable in VATS. Using a bit more AP, but dealing more damage, these moves can be very fun to watch the player character perform, and super satisfying to watch as they absolutely wreck enemies. And this is a fantastic addition, because while it enhances the gameplay, it also doesn't distract or make you feel compelled to use it every time. So now for the bad. VATS 1.1 inherits all the flaws of 1.0 except for the overpoweredness. So criticisms like not being able to target specific body parts with melee or unarmed attacks, and giving the player an inaccurate estimated damage while queuing up attacks. In addition to these is what I think is a rebalancing in the wrong direction, and that is reducing the critical hit chance from 15% down to 5% when using VATS. I know you can use perks and different weapons to up that percentage, but especially early on in the game, that added VATS bonus is doing a lot of heavy lifting when you are really wanting those criticals. 15% isn't a lot to begin with, but 5% is just pitiful. I would have rather that they keep the 15% while adjusting some of the critical perks so that it wouldn't become too powerful. But who am I to criticize the all-powerful Fallout New Vegas? Second from the top, who's it going to be? I've dropped a few hints, so hopefully you can tell. It is none other than the OG itself, the Aimed Shot. Aimed Shot is aptly named because it is exactly what the name implies. Switching to Aimed Shot during combat will bring up a menu that allows you to see the enemy you wish to attack and the probabilities of hitting the different body parts. Using aim shot increases the chance of a critical hit, and so the extra little AP it requires over a normal, non-aim shot could make it worth it. Let's start with the good stuff here, because there is a lot to like about aim shot. First, the menu. Now, it doesn't look like much, and I wouldn't blame anyone who hasn't played through the games to think that this is anything all that interesting, but it's honestly pretty great. All enemy types have a generic wireframe model in Fallout and Fallout 2, and a green shaded sprite model in Fallout Tactics. These models are actually a really nice break from the normal sprites that are the only representations of NPCs that you can interact with, except for the talking heads. It is a nice added element, and is a possible hint toward the aimed shot system being some sort of technology that is aiding the player. The wire mesh models look like they were scanned by something, almost like something you would see on a Star Wars readout, and could hint toward the aim shot process being an automated targeting system? ATS? ATS? I don't know. Now this menu is not elegant by modern standards, but if we're understanding these games from their unique circumstances, then it's at least understandable. You don't have to like it, but it helps to understand it. With the gift of hindsight comparing the original system with the modern games, one thing I like is the addition of a few other body parts when targeting humans, namely the eyes and the groin. The groin is obvious, it's for the memes, but the eyes are really great because they have the added effect of blinding the target on a critical hit, and the eyes are what you target when a headshot just isn't good enough. I would like to see these more granular options on newer VAT systems. I covered this before, but melee and unarmed attacks allow you to target body parts individually, which is something I would really like to see implemented in the new games to just give us more options. Aimed Shot is also available for all types of builds, although there are some exceptions that I will get to shortly, and to me this signifies the idea of player choice. Now some people might consider this a good thing, and others a bad thing, but I'm kind of neutral on it myself because I see both sides. There are certain weapons that cannot use the aimed shot ability, or rather the player cannot use the aimed shot ability while using certain weapons. These weapons are burst or automatic weapons, which if you think about it, it kind of makes sense since it's harder to aim an entire burst very accurately as opposed to just a single shot. 
What I will count as a negative is that explosive weapons like grenades cannot be used to aim shot, which is a bit of a bummer seeing as they are considered a primary weapon like in VATS 1.0 and 1.1. Although, if we're being honest, you're not really looking for precision strikes when using a frag grenade. Using melee or unarmed with aimed shot can be a bit burdensome, however. If you are not right next to the enemy, then you will not be able to attack or open the aimed shot menu. This isn't an enormous deal because you just get a tad bit closer until the attack can execute. But in a game where you are in the middle of combat and completely focused on the outcome of the fight that you're in, it really takes you out of it if you think you are close enough to attack, but you actually aren't. Fighting the invisible hex grid to try and land your unarmed and melee attacks can be really annoying, and it's something that the other VATS systems make easier. There are zero perks, skills, or traits that are specific to aimed shot. The only ones that have an effect on using aimed shot more effectively are related to AP and critical hits. This I think is a big failing on the part of the game, although it could be argued that the developers didn't see aimed shots as being an integral part of a build, rather just an added function to augment something like critical hits that were seen as a potential defining characteristic of a build, and that kind of makes sense. However, with how popular the system is, it is surprising that later games like Fallout 2 and Tactics didn't expand on it. I guess there were just not enough people online evangelizing about the sniper rifle I shot supremacy to make the developers consider expanding it, and that is one of the things that keeps it from being the top pick for me. But there's a trait called Fast Shot that will let the player attack for one fewer action point each time, but it disables aimed shot permanently. I like that that option is there, but after trying it once, I can't say that I will ever do it again, because... I'm addicted to trying to get those sick criticals and status effects with aimed shot. And so here we are at first place, and I have to say that I'm not surprised at my last place or first place picks, but the others didn't necessarily land where I thought they would. So why is Fallout 4's VATS, aka VATS 2.0, my top pick of all the versions we have discussed so far? VATS 2.0 has almost all the pros of all previous versions and adds a few more on top of that. One of the unique aspects of VATS 2.0 is not seen in any other version, and that is when VATS is engaged, time does not run in real time, nor does it completely freeze. Time will slow drastically, enough that you can take a bit of time to select your target and what body part you are wanting to hit specifically, but you don't have all day. Wait too long, and you give enemies the opportunity to start or finish their attacks on you, and I think this is the best of all the options. Freezing the world was nice because you could really plan out all your shots and consider all the options and angles. The real time function wasn't all that helpful and stripped the ability to target certain body parts or multiple targets. With drastically slowed time, however, we still get the opportunity to be tactical and choose who and what we hit, but we have a little pressure to get it done as quickly as possible. Some people might hate the feeling of being rushed and not being able to take their time, but I find the added small burden of being as efficient as possible to actually be fun. Similar to how the added stress of trying not to die in survival makes a playthrough that much more thrilling when you get into these crazy gunfights. When discussing VATS 3.0 in Fallout 76, we talked about how the critical system was combined with VATS, and actually that transformation occurred first with Fallout 4. What makes VATS 2.0 and VATS 3.0 different, however, is that 2.0 does give you some chances to obtain criticals outside of VATS. Using the cam overdrive will let the player get random criticals during normal combat until the cam wears off, and perks like Basher and Gun Fu will also give the player that wants random criticals to have that chance outside of VATS. My one criticism is that I would like to see it a bit more developed. Like when I was saying, give players the option to go down one road or the other in regards to criticals. 
let us decide if we want to have control and only deploy criticals in VATS, or no control and occur only during random combat. This is actually the closest to that idea, and for that it is superior in that regard. VATS 2.0 benefits melee and unarmed builds with a perk that borders on being overpowered, but I think it is a rather big plus when compared to the other versions. Blitz can be upgraded twice, with the max rank allowing the player to cover rather large distances between them and the target using VATS. VATS 1.0, 1.1, and 3.0 allow the player to be a small distance away from the target and teleport next to the enemy upon an attack, but Blitz takes it to a whole new level. The distance Blitz can cover is so large that it is close to being overpowered, and that would normally make me more critical of the mechanic, but I make somewhat of an exception in this instance. Until Fallout 4, I had never actually played through a proper melee build all the way through the game, because there are points in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas where your skill levels, weapon availability, and enemy difficulty make melee use very difficult. I would lose motivation before I could push through those portions, but in Fallout 4, the Blitz perk really helped me push through some of the awkward phases of a melee build and really see what an enjoyable experience melee can actually be. If the Grim Reaper's Sprint perk in VATS 2.0 worked like it did in 1.0, then we would have a broken system on our hands. But Grim Reaper's Sprint is not as overpowered anymore, giving you a 15% chance of full AP regeneration on a successful VATS kill. Overall, I consider it a win if the system incentivizes players to consider builds that they have previously not considered or liked before. VATS 2.0 also improves the tried and true formula from VATS 1.0 and 1.1 in a few small ways. 2.0 will no longer target your active companion, which is really nice because 99.9% .9 of the time, you don't actually want to target your active companion, so that's a good move. You are now able to cancel out of an active VATS attack, which doesn't need to happen often, but it's good to have the option. Previously, once you started an attack, you would have no option but to wait until it was finished, unable to cancel or exit out. Now for some debatable or neutral changes, like disabling VATS from working while the player is jumping, falling, or flying with a jetpack, where in VATS 1.0 and 1.1, you could be halfway through falling off a cliff and still activate VATS. You can also enter VATS even when there are no enemies around by holding the VATS button, although the utility of this is pretty questionable and I've yet to find a legitimate use for it, but it's an option I guess? Also I don't think this matters a whole lot in the scheme of things, but Fallout 4 lets the player initiate VATS before they find the Pip-Boy in Vault 111, which seems to contradict the series of events in Fallout 3, which didn't allow VATS until after getting the Pip-Boy. One fairly inconsequential bonus of VATS 2.0 is that when executing a critical hit on an enemy and having that critical hit be the death blow when using melee or unarmed will cause the player character to have a unique animation where they do something wild like suplex the enemy or something. And while it doesn't have a tangible effect on gameplay, it's really entertaining to watch. For the negative aspects of VATS 2.0, because there's always something, Bethesda saw fit to bring back the 90% damage resistance buff from Fallout 3, so the player character is able to absolutely tank attacks, which is overpowered and easily exploitable. There are fewer VATS related perks in VATS 2.0 than VATS 1.1, 11 versus 13, but it's not that big of a difference, so it's really not a huge deal. I don't think that this is that big of a deal either, but explosives are no longer able to be used in VATS, since things like grenades are secondary weapons now, which is a change from 1.0 and 1.1, but it's exactly how it works in aimed shot. So looking at all the good things preserved from previous iterations, the improvements and the mistakes, up to this point in the series, in the year of Adam 2023, Fallout 4's VATS system, or VATS 2.0, is, in my humble and scientifically proven opinion, the superior VATS system.
Tell me why you disagree with me in the comments. I'm not playing favorites here, but maybe there are some points that I hadn't fully considered that might change my mind. You never know until you try. Take care of yourselves, brothers and sisters, and may Adam watch over you until we meet again.